Now, getting a Labrador Retriever may very well be the best decision that you will ever make in your life, but the reality is it might also be a pretty bad decision. So in this video, I wanna talk about three things that you need to know before getting yourself a Labrador. Welcome back to the Will Afton Labrador Show. And in today's video, I wanna make sure that you are prepared for your Labrador. So I'm gonna hand you over to one of my breed experts, Louis, who's gonna talk about three things that you need to know before getting a Labrador. Number one, they're actually heavy shedders. It might come as a surprise to anyone who's never owned a Labrador because we don't associate short and flat coats with shedding but oh boy do Labradors shed. For those of you who've never shared your home with a Labrador, but are familiar with other breeds, they are comparable in terms of fur length to beagles and boxers, but comparable in terms of shedding amounts to huskies, malamutes, chow chows, and akitas. Shedding is year round with some seasonable variation in intensity, and some Labradors shed more than others. What I would always say to anyone planning on bringing a Labrador into their home is to get the right color of your home decor and clothing palette. If you wear mostly black, then a yellow lab's fur is going to show up like a dusting of snow on new tarmac. And if your furniture is mostly a neutral gray or cream, then your black lab's shedding is going to settle like charcoal and yogurt. Some people shrug off shedding like it's nothing. And I myself live quite happily with a heavy shedding dog, a Spanish Mastiff, and rarely even take notice of it when it's not coat blowing season. So if you're one of those people, then this information can just wash over you like a fresh wave of shed fur caught in a gale. Number two, color is about more than just aesthetics. The ancestor to all modern Labrador retrievers, the St. John's Water Dog, was consistently black, with only a tuxedo marking of white on its chest. With the development of the breed, black was still considered the only valid color for working retrievers, and the rarer yellows and even rarer chocolates were euthanized at birth as standard practice. Nowadays, however, we love our dogs no matter what their color, but, Given that the genes that decide colour in Labradors are arranged as such that chocolate Labradors are the rarest, we are left with a much smaller gene pool for them, meaning that there is less genetic diversity and therefore a higher likelihood of bad genes being kept alive in the chocolate lines. This may partially explain why chocolate Labradors have a possibly unfair reputation for being less trainable and, tragically, why they have an average lifespan that is about 10% shorter than their yellow and black litter mates and friends. So when you're picking out your Labrador puppy from the litter or adult from the shelter, bear in mind that the appearance of the dog might influence their health and possibly even their temperament. Anyone visiting this channel, I'm sure, would never pick a dog on looks alone, but take this tidbit as additional little food for thought in your decision making process. And number three, you can afford to be picky with your breeder. The Labrador Retriever is still the world's most popular breed of dog and has been for literally decades, even with the unbelievable rise of the Frenchie. What this means is that Labrador litters and breeders of varying standards are everywhere. You remember that old and probably apocryphal statistic that in a city you're never more than six feet from a rat. It might be just as true to say that in England, you're never more than one street from a litter of Labrador puppies. It's an exaggeration, but only just. What this means for you as a prospective Labrador buyer is that you can afford to be incredibly picky with your breeder. When the market is as saturated as this one is, you are well within your rights to insist that your breeder specializes in Labradors, that they have full pedigrees inclusive of health tests and temperament assessments for every single one of their breeding pairs, that their dogs are specifically chosen for your purpose, for showing, for working, for companionship, that there is a full contract involved in the process, that you can meet both parents with the puppies and can receive regular photographic updates of your chosen puppy, and that you can perform, or have an expert perform for you, a full temperament assessment of any available puppy in the litter, such as the Volhard's puppy aptitude test. If your breeder can tick all of those boxes and any boxes of your own and make you feel confident and happy that this is the puppy for you, then you'll know you're onto a winner. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to learn more about one of my favorite breeds in the world, the Labrador Retriever, make sure you subscribe to this channel because it's exactly what it's designed to do. And I can't wait to see you on the next episode.